Okay, so about a week ago, Samsung invited me to an exclusive event here in Toronto to check out their latest Galaxy devices. I got a chance to check out the Galaxy Watch 6, the Galaxy Tab S9 Ultra, the Z Flip 5, and of course, the phone that you guys all clicked on this video for, the Z Fold 5. Before we continue, if you guys want to see more upcoming coverage on the Z Fold 5, the Z Flip 5, or of course, the Tab S9 Ultra, then make sure you do subscribe to the channel and drop a like on this video while you're at it. I am dropping three videos today, so if you guys haven't seen my thoughts on the Z Flip 5 or the Tab S9 Ultra, then make sure to check out the links in the description below. A lot of Samsung content is coming your way. This was my first ever invite to an exclusive event, so it was a surreal experience to say the least. Samsung Canada did a terrific job of setting up the studio space with professional lighting and different sorts of sets so I could capture some high quality footage for you guys. I got to spend two hours with the newly released Galaxy Z Fold 5 and here are my honest thoughts. Samsung reps walked us throughout the room and talked about all the upcoming Galaxy devices. When we walked over to the Fold 5 section of the room, the rep handed me the Z Fold 5 and said, here you go, hold it. Check out how light this phone is. So I grabbed the phone not expecting much of a difference. But boy, was I ever wrong. I was honestly shocked at the weight of the device coming from a Fold 4. In the hands, the Fold 5 feels significantly lighter and much more compact. This is a much welcome change in my opinion. As a Fold 4 user, I did find this phone to get rather heavy at times, especially during extended periods of usage. So a lighter foldable that I can carry around with me without feeling the weight of the phone weighing me down on the daily is a change that I can get behind. This year there is a new color called icy blue along with beige and my favorite phantom black. There may also be some Samsung exclusive colors but I never got a chance to check them out. The new icy blue color looks amazing. It's a little bit of a light blue and in some lighting conditions it does look like it's lavender. My go-to color with all Samsung devices has always been phantom black and I don't see that changing anytime soon. Samsung's TM Row did say Samsung's next lineup of foldables, including the Fold 5, will be the thinnest and the lightest foldable Samsung has ever made. And you know what? He wasn't lying. So how did Samsung manage to make the Fold 5 lighter, you ask? It's all thanks to the newly redesigned hinge. There is a slightly less noticeable crease now on the phone. The phone is lighter and it's packing a much faster processor in the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2. This new hinge allows for the Fold 5 to fold completely flat. You can tell by this footage that there is no gap between the two screens when the Fold 5 is folded, making the device a much more compact foldable overall. Another advantage of the new hinge is that it does also increase durability of the Fold 5. The new hinge can now be folded nearly 300,000 times, which is 50% more than the Z Fold 4's 200,000 times. A lot of you guys are always commenting about the durability of foldables, even though personally I have had no issues at all, it's really nice to see Samsung making some significant strides in the durability department with the Fold 5. With no gap when the phone is closed, this means less dust and dirt can get through to the screen. Once again, a much welcomed improvement on the durability front. While on the outside, there may not be many noticeable differences in terms of design from the Fold 4 to the Fold 5, it's when you hold the Fold 5 in your hands, you start to realize all the engineering that went behind this design. The Fold 5 is noticeably slimmer and marginally more compact. The outer display is still a 6.2 inch panel and the inner display is a 7.6 inch panel. Both displays do support 120Hz refresh rate and they are both OLED panels. Speaking of the inner display, there are some new updates to One UI specifically designed for the Z Fold 5's inner display. With the Fold 4, Samsung introduced the taskbar. Now with the new One UI updates, the taskbar is even better. You can now place 12 apps on your taskbar and 4 apps you frequently use will be suggested to you. A minor change that I really do appreciate is that now you can hold down an app and slide throughout the home screen to place the app on any window, instead of the old way of having to drag an app to the edge of the display and move it on over. Of course, the Fold 5 is a foldable, meaning that one of its main strengths is true multitasking. I say true because I feel like the Fold 5's inner display is truly big enough to actually multitask on. The potential to open up three tabs at once and one floating window and do whatever you want on each window is so useful to me. And let's not forget that this phone is like a personal pocketable PC thanks to Samsung DeX. In one corner, Samsung set up a showroom with a monitor to showcase the capabilities of Samsung DeX. The Fold 5 was connected to this monitor via Bluetooth and the experience was just so smooth and fluid. Just being able to do work or scroll the web on a monitor or a TV like this is something that not many phones out there can replicate. Everyone, including myself, was wondering if Samsung would make the outer display bigger. But that's 
not happening this year and I think it's the right move. Hear me out. The outer display, while it is smaller than other foldables, I still find it to be very useful. And on a foldable device, I'm using the inner display about 70% of the time. And a bigger outer panel would have meant that the overall weight of the fold would have inevitably gone up. So keeping this form factor and design is the right move for the time being, at least in my opinion. As I mentioned earlier, yes there is a crease on the Fold 5's inner display. Although I will say it is a lot less noticeable now in certain angles. I know that I may be in the minority here, but the crease has never really bothered me. I've made this analogy before and I'll keep making it till my point gets across about the crease to you guys. For me, the crease is comparable to my nose. Yes, my nose. You see, your nose is always within your field of vision, but the human brain chooses to ignore the nose because it's not necessary information you need to function on a day-to-day -day basis. In the same way, after you spend some time with the Fold 5, your brain learns to ignore the crease and it does become a lot less noticeable. I promise. Now, what I'm super excited for is the new chipset. We all know that the Snapdragon HN2 chipset is an absolute beast. Now, combine this with 12 gigabytes of RAM and this phone flies. In my testing, the Fold 5 was a pleasure to use. The animations looked fluid and scrolling through the phone felt like butter. There should also be a major improvement in efficiency this year thanks to the Snapdragon HN2 chipset. The S23 Ultra is my battery king of 2023. And despite the Fold 5 rocking a 4,400 milliamp hour battery, I do expect much improved screen on times. Of course, that still remains to be seen in actual day-to-day -day testing, so make sure you guys do subscribe to the channel if you do not want to miss my full review. While the Z Fold 5 doesn't have a slot to store the S Pen, Samsung did come up with a pretty smart way to carry the newly designed S Pen with you. There is a new case accessory sold by Samsung that allows you to stick the S Pen on the back of your phone. The S Pen for the Z Fold 5 is also now redesigned. The S Pen is now slimmer, lighter, and much more convenient to use while you are writing. Over on the back, we have a 50 megapixel main camera lens, a 12 megapixel ultra wide camera, and a 12 megapixel 3x telephoto zoom, along with a 10 megapixel outer selfie camera and a 4 megapixel under the display inner camera. The phone does have a new image sensor. I didn't have much time to check out the cameras, but from the shots that I took in the showroom, they did look pretty darn good to me. And I will always appreciate how we're able to see the pictures we took on a massive 7.6 inch panel. The detail on these images do look pretty good. The contrast on the saturation looked on point, but but obviously more testing is required. With that being said though, the Z Fold 4 did have an underrated camera system. All of these pictures I took on my Z Fold 4 when I went to Korea last year and they came out amazing in my opinion. Definitely a camera system I trust to take some high quality images while I'm traveling. The Z Fold 5 may look very similar to the Z Fold 4 in terms of design, but it's really when you hold the phone in your hands and you use the phone, you start to realize all of the work that went into making the Fold 5. Yes, these may be marginal changes, but in my opinion, they were necessary changes to perfect the Samsung foldable design. The Z Fold 5 is now much lighter, slightly more compact, and is much improved in the performance department. The hinge feels a lot sturdier, the phone is much more durable now, and the crease is less pronounced. Let me remind you that these are all changes that we were asking for for quite some time now, and Samsung delivered. If you're upgrading from the Z Fold 3, this my friends is a very significant upgrade for you. You will not be disappointed. Storage wise, the Fold 5 starts at 256 gigabytes and goes all the way up to one terabyte. You can pre-order the Z Fold 5 right now, there are some great deals going on and I will leave a few links for you guys in the description below so make sure you go and check that out. This entire month I will be bombarding you guys with Samsung content so make sure you do turn on those notifications. If you haven't already, make sure you go and check out my Z Flip 5 first impressions video. The Flip series this year has a lot going for it. As always, thank you so much for watching and don't forget to flex with your foldable tech.